Right song. Right follow. What's going on, boys? It's your boy, Spuzzy Does It, coming in with another live stream for NRL Fantasy. It's been a while, so familiarly. It's been a while. A couple of people, why well, a couple of people? I mean, there's been plenty of people out there. Dozens upon dozens have been messaging me weekly. Where is the next NRL Fantasy video? We want the next NRL Fantasy video. Where have you been? Where are you? Well, right now, that's all that matters is that I'm in the bunker, as you can see, boys. And it is a try upstairs because we're back on the on the center stage talking about your favorite NRL fantasy live streams. Talking about NRL fantasy. It's it's actually been a very long time since I, I've done these. I do apologize in advance, boys. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming back, hitting that like button down below. The more likes I get the more I know what the audience wants. So if you guys really enjoy these type of videos, be sure to hit the like button down below because that's a good indicator to me, at least to my YouTube channel, what the audience are looking for. And that kind of determines where I, where I move, where I pivot to. So as you can see, we've got our NRL fantasy team here. And uh, I've had some time off and I don't mean I have some time off as an NRL fantasy coach, just doing the videos. I went to uh, Vietnam for a little bit. And then when I came back, I was doing other things. I got a little bit bogged down in other stuff. and you know, work-life priorities and whatever and, and family life. But it's good to be back, boys. It's good to be back in the hot seat talking to you guys right now. There's quite a few people into the chat. Who's that? Sylvester Magell was, was hyped till I saw your eels top. Unlucky, buddy. Unlucky. What's going on, Ted Crembe? How are you? Entryhon Rodriguez. <laughs> Rodri Ricardo Rodriguez. Mr. Styles. We've got Izzy Killer. Lazy Gamer. And, of course, the usual people. Henry D. Lynch, Joshua H. Hoganator. And a few other people are going to be like coming in here, having a bit of a hot look on what we're doing. So I thought today, why not do a quick recap video as to where we're at today from how we got to that position. So I want to look from round three, which was the last video I did all the way up to the current round 10 and do a bit of a sign off video and then work on next week's video as the video, what we're going to do next, and what's our next steps going to be. Because I guess recapping the next couple of weeks is going to be a little bit while because I've actually written all these notes down, all these post-its that are all over the place at the moment. Uh, all over my desk and I was getting actually really excited about doing this. So without any further ado, what's going on, Jesse Kinley? Hey, Dakuriga, what's going on, David Baker? Thanks for coming to the chat, boys. So this is my team. As you can see, uh, in round 10, I'll go back all the way. Where are we ranked? We're ranked 4,431st out of almost 100,000 fantasy coaches out there. It's a little bit lower. And by lower, I mean backwards from where we'd want to be. We want to be more up into the pointy end. But we will talk about that. We've got 19 trades left up our sleeves. So I haven't used every trade for every week that's passed, which is a good sign for us coming in. So I've got a lot of salary room uh, remaining inside my cap. So obviously I've backed up a little uh, bank there. But let's go back to where we last left off, boys. Let's have a look at round three. So what were we doing? We decided to move around and try something a little bit different from uh, Captain Cameron Smith. And I captain uh, Damian Cook, who ended up getting 50, which is an okay score. But if you want to get captain scores, you need to get a little bit more than that. I didn't lose anything to the majority of people because Cameron Smith ended up getting a 50. Liggy Sal was a little bit disappointing with an injury there. He only got 14 points and had to come off the field. So it's always disappointing. It's always a little bit discouraging when one of your cash cows or hopeful cash cows uh, potential cash cows ends up going a little bit backwards for you. Other disappointing results for me was uh, Bryce Cartwright not achieving much at all. And how I came to this team from round two, because I should start from there, was I actually got an injury in round two from Isaiah Papali, which was a little bit disappointing because not only did he not make the cash that we were looking to make, but he ended up scoring uh, minimal points for us by only getting two the prior week before pulling a knee injury, which ruled him out for the rest of the season. So that's always a bit of a bad omen. And the trade that I decided to make to upgrade my team was uh, Papali into Adam Dahui. I can't correctly pronounce that guy's name. As you guys, some of you guys come into my videos just to tell me you can't pronounce uh, foreign names for anything. That's still a thing that happens in these streams. So... I ended up trading to Adam and he ended up doing quite well for me. He actually made quite a lot of money and I did eventually trade him out. But another surprise for me who was someone that was doing considerably well was Peter Hiku. Peter Hiku with 41 points was absolutely nailing it. Corey Thompson was another one who came into my team about round two and was absolutely killing it as well. So moving into round four, the trade that I made, I decided to do something a little bit different. 
I decided to trade uh, Bryce Cartwright into Tyrone Peachy because I wanted to be able to move someone into my center position because I felt like uh, with Richie Kenner, I believe Richie Kenner was uh, possibly out for that round. Yes, he was. So I needed coverage in my second row. So I decided to pull in Lachlan Croker from my bench to fill in Bry Bryce Cartwright, trade Bryce, Bryce Cartwright out for Tyrone Peachy. Yes, uh, Tyrone Peachy at the time was about four hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars, which was very excessive for his price. But I thought, you know what? He's been scoring very well off the bench, playing 10 to 15 minutes as pretty much a ball runner. And if he is going to be coming in for Nathan Cleary due to his injury, I'm expecting 80 minutes. I'm expecting a lot of ball time. I'm expecting a lot of big players, a couple of tackle busts, tack tackle bumps, whatever, you, however you want to put it. And he's going to uh, build up a lot of points there. And disappointingly, boys and girls, is that he only ended up getting 14 that round. And, uh, was a huge discouragement for myself. Uh, Havili ended up, I believe, getting his worst round of 24 points, but he he ends up being a top-scoring player in time to come, as we'll see as we slowly go down the scale. Corey Thompson again did the trick. In fact, my back three was the most consistent position of all with uh, Ponga Tedesco and also Thompson. Cameron Smith only scored 23, and I still had captain Damian Cook, which was good for me because 49 is obviously greater than 23. But uh, I think from this point on, I decided to captain Kickout for the next round, and then I ended up going overseas. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now, guys. If you decide to go overseas, expect to go back in the rankings of NRL Fantasy. It's always the way. Some In some countries, the NRL Fantasy app does not work. Like in Vietnam, for example, I could not log in and I could not log in via the domain interface or the app. So I couldn't actually change my team. So once I had a team that was stuck, it was stuck there for about uh, two weeks. I did end up um, calling someone and asking them to make a trade for me or two before the games. But obviously, given the time zone differences and whatnot, I wasn't able to make everything as... Uh, uh, as speedily as, as it could have been possibly done. So I actually think that no trades ended up happening for that very reason. Or oh, actually, I actually went from Peachy to Dugan. Sorry, my mistake. I traded Peachy to Dugan. And this was one of the most amazing things because when I traded Peachy to Dugan, Dugan was named fullback. And I was really excited because I thought, okay, I'm going to get Dugan. Not a lot of people had him. I think only like at the time when I grabbed him, only like 2% of people had him. I was like, okay, yep, I'm going to put him in the center position. He's going to score really well. Because I wasn't here in Australia, obviously picking Dugan was a bad move because an hour before the game, he got pulled out. And then I got a no score for that position at all because I didn't have a backing uh, center because Richie Kenner, my emergency center, was also injured. So... That was really disappointing and it quite it sucked because I think Peachy the following week ended up coming back really, really, really well. So I was very excited to see that. And I was very glad that that actually happened. Um, in other news, Damien Cook ended up scoring a 77, which was fantastic. Again, the only thing is, is that I had Kikau as my captain who only scored 38. And uh, Jeremy Marshall King also scored... Uh, very well for me, who I traded from Adam Duhui for, um, to Jeremy Marshall King, ended up scoring 38 and obviously made an abundance of cash for us. As we roll into round six, I don't believe much had changed. I think I was able to call someone and get a trade for uh, Peter Godone into, um, into George Jennings. George Jennings ended up making quite a bit of money. I think he's made over about $100,000 since I picked him up. And he seems to be a pretty solid wing center for us. So... I'm quite pleased to actually see that. Disappointingly, again, uh, Kikau ended up not achieving what we wanted to achieve. I would have obviously have moved my captaincy from uh, William and Kikau had I have known that was going to happen. Because look again, Damien Cook ended up scoring 73 points. So there was more points gone begging. Cameron Smith scored 64 uh, Griffin, 29. Havili starts to get into his stride and he scores a 48. Robbie Rockow was a little bit disappointing, only getting a 20. So I knew he was going to go down in value. But surprisingly, uh, Dugan was able to come back and he ended up scoring me a 50. So I was pretty pleased with that to a degree, even though he lost points for me the prior week, which sucked um, quite a lot for me. But so far, the team started to pan out pretty well. I rolled into round seven. I think I just got home from Vietnam at the time. I went back into about 15,000th 
as my fantasy, which is the lowest fantasy rank I think I've ever had playing fantasy, like as an overall rank, which sucks. So I went back in the ranks and I thought, well, this season's a little bit gone, so I'm going to have to try a little, uh, a few different things in order to get my rank back up. And going into round seven, uh, Jesse Bromwich, who I thought he wasn't scoring excessively well. He was doing okay for his price range. I think a lot of people were banging on him on doing exceptionally better. And a lot of people had traded from him into Jai Arrow, which we spoke about back in round one. And that was one of the possibilities I was thinking about. And I obviously couldn't make that trade because, I, again, I was overseas. And I, at this point, after round seven, I knew that Jai Arrow had already made a significant amount of money. In fact, he was, he was one of the best fantasy scoring players for the next four to three weeks until he got injured back in, well, up until round nine. So I think a lot of money, a lot of people exceeded my rank just by getting in a good trade like Jai Arrow, who ended up going to lock and uh, playing major minutes there and was doing exceptionally well in that position. Tackles. Lack of tackle, uh, lack of tackle, missed tackles as well, which was a huge combination. So Jesse Bromwich ended up losing me money. Nine points wasn't good, so I seem to be a little bit slow away. One trade that I thought was really going to capitalize for me was bringing in Kurt Capewell because he was named at uh, the 12th position in the second row on the right, uh, on the right side. And then unfortunately, an hour before the game, Scott Sorensen was named there and Kurt Capewell was named on the bench. And I was a little bit disappointed because I actually trade Peter Hiku to Kurt Capewell. I thought Hiku had a very good start to the rounds and I didn't believe that Hiku was going to be able to benefit my team much more than what he currently was. I thought he had, had already hit his peak and I'm quite glad that I ended up trading him out because he's gone backwards ever since. And Kurt Catewell lost a bit more money for me at this point. I think it was down to about 310000 which is uh, going down to almost rookie price. So that was one of the things that I was a little bit disappointed on. But bringing my captaincy back to Damian Cook, 65, ended up doubling to 130. So that was always a good note. Disappointingly, uh, Paul Vaughan's just losing money left, right, and center. He just keeps going down and down and down. It's one of those things that... Um, I've picked him and I'm sticking to him because I think the only other upgrade I can really do for him in the front row is probably for Fida, maybe to Powell, but then as soon as you make that trade, it's a sideways trade, you waste a trade, and trades are so limited now in NRL fantasy with having a limited bench that you need to make sure that the trades you're doing are forwarding your team, and if you have to suck it in a little bit, and, and take the blows with some of their low scoring games and you're going to have to do it. I am happy that he is playing the same amount of minutes. I just wish it was a bit more point effective per minute wise. Uh, Havili went back down to 26. Nichols hasn't been scoring. He's been scoring more than his break even, which is always good. I'm always loving the fact when a guy scores better than his break even, but he's been scoring very slowly. So his prices have been going up not as fast as what we were hoping. Then, moving into round eight, where did I decide to go from here? I decided to go from Bromwich into Scott Sorensen, considering that Scott Sorensen was given the starting position. On the other foot, Kurt Catewell was named at the other second row because of all the injuries throughout their team, like the way Graham's, Luke Lewis's. So, Kurt Catewell ended up coming in the goods for me. It just happened around later. And I highly advise that if you're looking for a, a center who you're looking to score, capitalize good points off, and consistently do it. A second row, you know, 60 minute second row will always obviously do that over someone who plays center like a Greg Inglis who's on and off every game, has a couple of rounds here, might have a couple of quiet ones. So I think he's a, a really good buy price. So that's my hot tip at the moment. Jump onto the Kurt Capewell train. He's absolutely amazing. So I think Kurt Capewell is one of those guys that if you're looking for a center, he's also good. Uh, Dugan scored me 30 points. Again, he's injured, so not much to say there. The other trade that I ended up bringing was I brought in Mitch Rain. Mitch Rain, now, he was dubbed to play 80 minutes of hooker. I was one week late on doing that simply because when they named him at hooker, I wasn't confident if they play him for 80 minutes because they weren't doing that with Nathan Peets. And I thought, why would they do that with Mitch Rain? Surprisingly, he did. He ended up scoring 70. Absolutely amazing. And then, oh, more than that, 70. And then this week, he ended up scoring 70. So he went up in some significant prices for us after going down earlier in the season. So that was good good vibes. Avili also scored 72 points. 
And it just goes to show, every time that Havili plays more minutes for the Canberra Raiders, the Raiders seem to have a better set, a better format, a better, a better platform in order to attack. So he is a bit bulky, but he threatens the line. Every time they're in the 10, Havili can threaten to like dummy and go himself or like throw in the defense and get out a couple of quick passes. So I was quite happy with that. George Jennings, who I had on the bench, emergency bench, didn't end up scoring his 47, which was more than Dugan and actually more than Corey Thompson and Kirk Catewell. Jeremy Marshall King only scored 21. So did Appy side Carousel. And that was one of the disappointing things. I brought in Appy considering he was scoring very well. He was up and about and he was doing terrific and fantastic scores. Getting 50, 60s, 70s at some point. And then as soon as you bring him in, you get these sideways trades and everything so starts to fall backwards a little bit here and there. But Slay Griffin ended up getting a 60. I'm very happy with Slay Griffin. I know at the start of the... At the start of the year, everyone was like, don't pick Slay Griffin. He's, he won't score as well. And then he's ended up doing exceptionally well. Just like Havili. Everyone was like, don't pick Havili because, you know, he might only play 20 minutes. He might only get 20s or something like that. And he's obviously, you got to go with your gut sometimes, boys. There's going to be a lot of people out there who tell you this trade, that trade. And I'm going to I'm gonna tell you what trades I make. I'm not going to tell you to make those trades. I'm going to give you some insight into my team because the, the only honest way is to give you insight into my team because a lot of people tell you trades that they don't make in their team just on speculation. But um, I think the best source is to always look at someone's team and look at the front running teams and seeing what trades are they making and, and evaluating why they've made those trades and get a little bit more familiar with the format. Surprisingly, at this point, I jumped from 15,000th back in like round five after going overseas up to 3,489th. So I'd actually jumped about 12,000 ranks um, in a matter of five to four rounds. So whatever I was doing, I was doing the right moves. So I was quite happy with that big leap of faith. And the other thing I noticed is that a lot of the rankings are very, um, a lot of these rankings from like 1,000th back to like 10,000th, the difference is like 100 points. So like if you can sneak a couple of more points than your rivals or your head-to-heads, like here or there, then it's definitely worth doing. So I think that's one thing you can look at. There's guys that, that a lot of people aren't picking up, like the Ryan Madison's, you know, he's now 11%, but earlier than that, he was a... a, a POD, a uh, point of difference, a player of difference to most teams. Scoring exceptionally well, getting better minutes, and then he went down a little bit, but back up. Because he's up at a peak price, 835000 I can't justify buying him. But um, for me, it's now that I've got a lot of money in my bank, I'm looking at all my options. I'm evaluating... Who can I actually bring in? It sucks that I've had Liggy Sow on my bench for so long. I'm just sitting there thinking, what do I want to do with you? What do I want to do with you? And there hasn't been a trade because there, were, there was a long time in between a lot of those rounds where there wasn't any cash cows that were viable to grab. And it was like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? And um, I, it's not till this round, round 10, that I actually ended up making the trade. But before we get there, round number nine. So given that uh, Dugan was named out for the rest of... Well, he's not named out for the rest of the season. He's, he's named at least out for like eight weeks now, possibly six weeks, four weeks. Sometimes these guys come back from injuries. It's a little bit, hey, how you going? But I decided to bring in Fenua for uh, Dugan, and he ended up scoring 39 points, which was I brought him onto my interchange bench, scored quite well. He played the first, when I watched him the first week against the Eels, I thought, yeah, this is the type of guy I want. He's like a Conrad Harrell from like 2014 and 15. He'll get tackle bust. He'll run the ball. He'll pop out those little offloads. He'll do everything that a fantasy coach wants. That not necessarily that like a coach for a football team would want because there's a lot of risky plays, but he's got the build for a winger that if he comes up against people like a, a, a Bevan French, for example, you know, he's just going to, he's just bound to get tackle bust. Like, that's where all the points for wingers usually come from. If they're not scoring tries, like, you know, they're Joey Rapanas. So, uh, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with that move. And, uh, Corey Thompson seems to be on the down, but I think he's been consistent. So I'm going to hold him there because he is playing fullback and I, I do enjoy having him in my side. He isn't a Tedesco by any means, but that doesn't mean he's scoring as bad as Tedesco. And a lot of big things that I keep hearing, cause I've got a discord that I've got open. I'll actually bring it over here. I've got a Discord that we use, guys, um, and we've got an NRL Fantasy page right here, NRL Fantasy live chat, and a lot of people seem to like want to trade people because they don't perform quite well. The Discord is now in the chat box as well, as well as in the video description down below for anyone watching the replay. 
But one of the things is uh, people have a bad round. Like James Tesco gets 23. And next thing you know, people want to trade him out. They're like, let's get rid of this guy. Like, what are we doing? Like, why don't we have him in this team? And la da 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 The other trade that I ended up... Uh, so I, I completely... Sorry, I don't want to jump ahead of myself. I completely disagree when you make big gun trades into like iffy trades. James Tedesco, at the end of the year, will have outscored most wing fullbacks. So I'm not terrified by that at all. Another trade that I brought in was uh, Matt Frawley. So the reason why I brought Matt Frawley in is because uh, just before the Bulldogs game, he was named a hooker. And then, well... A couple, like 24 hours before, he was named at hooker. And I was like, yes, okay, he's playing hooker. This is good news. This is great. This is fantastic. I'm excited to see this. He'll be playing hooker. I'll bring him into my half spot. He'll make money. He'll make, you know, he'll make points. And then last minute, he gets swapped into the half position and Jeremy Marsh King goes to hooker. I still decided to leave Matt Frawley at half just to see how he went instead of Jeremy Marshall King. And I'm glad I did because Frawley walks away with 41 and Jeremy Marshall King walks with 29. And uh, it was a good trade all around. Again, Kurt Catewell did exceptionally well. 48 points, guys. If you haven't got Kurt, Kurt Catewell, now is the time to grab him at your center if you're looking for centers. So this comes into round 10 now. And I'm kind of like looking at my options. And this is what I've done. I've decided to make some really, really, really big calls here. I've decided to make some really big calls because I'm looking at Carl Lawton. Now, last year, you guys know I love Carl Lawton. I brought him in. He was, he was a rookie price. Played hooker, second rate for the Titans. Second rate by meaning off the bench. And he ended up coming in, and he's just fast. He's electric. He's, he, he only needed to play 20 to 30 minutes to score 50 points. Because he'd make a good line break. He'd get out of dummy half quick. He'd do this. He'd do that. Sometimes, you know, that's not going to be consistent. He's not going to be scoring 50 points every time. And the only reason he ended up scoring 62 in his first game for the Warriors was very obviously because of the two tries he ended up scoring. Will that happen every week? No. But the thing that I think that's going to happen from here is that he'll play more minutes. He played about 21 minutes last week. And I think moving forward, given that the success they had with him at the helm, I think he might be pushed up to about 30 minutes. At $368,000, I think he's a bit of a steal. And you can put him at center or hooker. Obviously, you're going to put him in your center spot because we're going back to forwards over backs and in, in ratings of consistency. So I'm bringing in Carl Lawton for the Warriors into my team because I think that's the trade to go. The other one I'm going to be making is Reese Martin, who went up to 11% uh, popularity overnight because he ended up scoring 63 in his opening game not only that but he's named it lock for the bulldogs and he might be holding that position for quite some time so it's very rare that you get a good cash cow to come in who might also transfer into a keeper if he can score 40s 50s 60s and keep that push going yes he was aided by a try we do know he's going to be scoring we do know he's going to be scoring a lot more a lot of more points down the track because he is starting. He's going to be making a lot of cash. So why wouldn't I bring him on the interchange? I ask anyone who questions that move. So I'm pretty happy. I've got every single player in position now live and people playing now. So I'm really excited to see that. So Reese Martin was a bit of a dead giveaway. Anyone who doesn't bring in Reese Martin, I kind of question why you wouldn't do that. I'm going to leave Damien Hook at my captaincy because I think he's just consistent. He's playing 80 minutes. Cameron Smith, 37, eh, a little bit iffy, showing a little bit of age, getting penalized for things that he wouldn't get penalized the year before, getting double penalized for talking back to the ref. These are all things that you've got to take into consideration when you've got him. Yes, Cameron Smith will still score phenomenal scores throughout the year. Yes, he's a keeper, but I think Damian Cook is the way to go. So I'm going to stick him on there. I'm hoping Apisai Karasar kind of picks it up a little bit. Yes, he did get a 40 last week. But we'll see how he goes. I'm going to chance it. I'm, I'm going to, I might bring in Fenua. I might actually swap Fenua for Corey Thompson just off my bench. And I might leave Thompson there. Uh, that's one of the things that I'm kind of like ifing and buffing. But um, this is my team. As you see it in the flesh, I have been bumped down to 4,431st. But I'm actually pretty uh, optimistic given that we've got 19 trades up our sleeve. We've got $480,000. I got a lot of cash to burn. And while I'm not burning that cash, that's kind of points slipping out of your fingers. So the, there's a correlation, obviously, between having money on the field and getting higher points. But I've been holding on to this little bit of money for a little bit of time. 
don't really know where I want to upgrade. I've got a couple of things up my sleeve that I want to talk about next week. And next week, I think we'll talk about State of Origin and the cover for the buy coming up for that round. Because it's going to be absolutely insane, given that the amount of players, the amount of teams not playing. So uh, no one will be able to field a full 17 team unless they've got a full 17 team of one particular team or two particular teams, which... Generally, they're not really a fantasy threat in the long run. So uh, I'm not too worried about that. This is going to be my team walking into it, guys. So I'm, uh, I'm looking to answer any questions that you guys may have in the chat that's on the right-hand side. Again, guys, if you're looking for um, an NRL fantasy league to join, I've got it down in the video description down below, right at the bottom. If you're looking to join our Discord community and have a live chat, there is the link. It's also in there. If you're looking for a very good resource on where to find break-evens, I'll pop it in the chat right now. Because if you have a look at the NRL Fantasy break-evens, which is nrlfantasy.com.au forward slash break-evens.php right here before your eyes. Fantastic resource. We talk about, we spoke about this back in round two. Absolutely amazing. Look at here. A lot of people play as if it's the share market and they look at the break-evens as who they're going to bring in. Uh, Reese Martin, negative 14. So yes, he's going to be making a lot of money for you. Uh, who else is here? There are certain traps like Anthony uh, Jelling, who's negative two. He's starting. He's the 17th man. I don't expect much from him. Carl Lawton is 14th, but he will be subbing in for the hooker role. Benoit is negative two, so he'll be making more money. And uh, you've got Kirk Capewell is still third. And can I just say, Kirk Capewell doesn't have a lot of people that own him. Let's have a look. He's only got 1.71% of owners at the moment, and he's $385,000. Yes, he won't be playing starting second row for that much longer. We'll have to see how it goes. But it's everything else. And again, you can look at the eyes with the highest break-evens, like the Jai Arrows, Nathan Curry. So obviously, if you've got Jai Arrow, it's time to trade him out. You know, he won't be playing while uh, Paul Gallen, who's obviously been MIA for a while, is still 2% of owners. So that's, that's kind of like a good resource for you guys. There's obviously many NRL fantasy groups on Facebook that people use, like the Renegades. There's the NRL Fantasy Fanatics website that are their own domain and have a very good, very good following, very friendly uh, group of people. But let's get to the questions. Let's have a look. What is happening in the chat right now? I'm going to go from the top down to the bottom, just as a case of manners who's been there. We've got a lot of chat going in. Let's have a look down up on page. I'm having a look. Up the Kale Ponga says Liggy Boy. Atta boy. Pong has been killing it, mate. Pong has been killing it. Do -do -do. Rockow sucks. Yeah, I, I traded out Robbie Rockow right at the perfect time. He actually peaked and ended up. Um, I think he still might be playing starting second row, but I moved him out. He made a significant amount of money for him and it was time to get rid of him. So I did that and I was very happy with the move. Uh, Arrow is the best. He was exceptionally well. Unfortunately, like I said, I missed the boat. How do you obtain a, a player? You need to trade. Yes, yeah, so any of the players that you have before you, you can just trade them out easily by clicking on the top right hand side. Oh, you go to your trades page up here. Sorry. The, the NRL Fantasy app changes every year with a different sponsor, seemingly. Go RTS for Thompson. Actually, you know what? That's actually a good trade to look at. Let's have a look at that. I, I don't think that's a bad trade by any means, dude. 575k is only 80k more. He's coming off 62 points. He's, he just lost 66k. Let's have a quick look at Roger Tulvastia. That's actually not a bad trade to make. His break even is 29. His average points is 43. He's got all the right symbols. 13% ownership versus Corey Thompson, who has 29. So that could be a point of difference for anyone. Corey Thompson's break even, I think he's due to lose money, isn't he? 48. So that's actually not a bad trade to make. I, I might even go reverse the Carl Lawton trade. Thanks for the heads up, that Troy Ozzy. That's not a bad trade. Uh, Kubeth Kerr says, don't get Kurt Kate while he loses a position in a few weeks. I guess at the end of the day, if I've got him for six, seven weeks, he'll have the price advantage of making that money that he's got there and also a, a, steady, uh, a steady center scoring exceptionally well. That's doing pretty well. Umar Tahir, what's going on, dude? Good to have you in the chat. Aaron Rathborn, going on. What overall ranking am I at the moment? 4,431st. Just going to skip going down. Kubitko reckons Lawton's a trap. 
Uh, possibly, but it's a risk I'm willing to take given I'm, I'm pretty cool to uh, bump up. Tyrant Raffles says, make sure you get... <laughs> make sure you get... Uh... What's his name? Make sure you get Respawn, definitely. I've already jumped on that bandwagon. Up the bunnies. Bye. See you later. Thank you so much for coming in. What do you people think of the new Titans 5.8? I look, hey, I think there's better cash cows to grab at the moment rather than chancing it. So, you know, Reese Martin, $284,000. You're not going to get him at a better price. So I think that's the way to go at the moment. You bought Martin last week, Zach Cohen. That's a pretty brave, that's a pretty brave testament, man. Good on that. AJ Brunson? Good question. AJ, let's have a look. Oh. I think you might have typed that in there wrong, Jesse Kinley. I'll have a look at that in a second, my man. Thoughts on Murray being benched? Well, I mean, I obviously don't have him, so I don't have the trouble with having a bench player, but obviously I'd prefer most of my players to start over players that don't. And that's why I picked up... I mean, you could bring in Reese Martin for Cameron Murray right now, and that might kind of solve your problem right there. Your team value, Jack Dern, your team value is 13.5 million. My team value, that's actually a really good question. Where can you... Usually on the old app, you used to be able to see it straight on the nose, and it would show you. Where does it have it here? Does it have it here at all? Uh, maybe if I go to rankings. My rate, uh, 11.95 11 mil. And I've got f about 500 up my sleeve, so about 12.4, 12.5. It looks like the top teams, yeah. That must be a top team there, Jackie Dern, because it looks like the top guys are like the usual suspects. Youth of Scotland, 13.3, 13.6. That's quite an exceptional good team there, dude. Been named for Titans at 212k. Look, man, I, I, I kind of like look at this and I'm like, I'm looking at players that I think are going to be playing consistently. Like when you brought in Reese Martin last week, there was no guarantee that he was going to be playing the following week. So I think that's good on you to be able to bring him. Kind of like Kurt Catewell and Scott Sorensen. Like we thought Sorensen would be playing more rounds and ended up getting dropped. These are all kind of like things that you got to take a bit of a punt on and trust your gut and go with the flow. So it's one of those things that uh, you kind of have to go on your own path to kind of discover it. And everyone's going to have different theories. Everyone's going to tell you, don't bring him in. And if you didn't bring him in and end up scoring very well and then getting into the next week's side as well, then, you know, more power to more power to you if you decided to bring him in. So trust your gut. Always do a little bit of your own research to bring in whoever you want to bring in. Do I think Murray will come back from the starting line at the start of the season? Hmm. I mean, if, if any of the Burgess boys ended up getting, uh, you know, suspended or anything like that, or if there's any injuries, I think he'd be able to come in. But I think it might be time to trade out Cameron Murray because the only reason why he was coming starting for a little while was Sam Burgess' suspension. And uh, I, I don't think that's going to be a consistent uh, thing that you'll be able to see for Cameron Murray. I think you've made a good bit of buck on him and it's time to like, give, him the, give him the kick. Zach Cohen said, I want Capewell. Should I trade out Hiku, Isaiah, or Thompson? I think given, I think if, if you can trade out Thompson, because he's kind of hit the peak, Isaiah is still like converting and stuff for the, the Broncos, so he still might be doing con considerably well. But Thompson seems to be a bit, a bit on a downside now that I look at it. In fact, I'm going to look at this another way, and I'm going to reverse my... Carl Lawton trade. But the only problem is I don't think I've got a center. Oh, I've got George Jennings. Yes, I can do this. All right, let's have a look. Reverse. Got it. Bring him in. Okay, that didn't reverse. Here we go, boys. Reverse this trade. Um, I think the app might be a little bit glitchy because I, I th he's still there. Okay, trades. Reverse trade, reverse this trade. It won't let me do it. Okay, I'm just going to roll back my entire team. I don't know, boys. Sometimes you get a little bit 
my app gets a little bit funny like that. Maybe because I brought in George Jennings. I'm not sure. But let's try and have a look at this. Let's have a look at this. Have a look at it a different way. Let's bring in Roger Tulvashek, who I think might be the way to go. Thank you to Aussie for coming in. Troy to Aussie. That's actually a really good pickup. Scott Sorensen, someone who I want to trade out. So, um, if I want to bring him out, Reese Martin. Reese Martin, boys. Sub. Get him in there. Bam. And that will be my team. Like that. Bam. Right in front of you. All right, boys. What's that? Thoughts on Harris? Break even of 70, but was considered a gun before his injury. Should I stick with him or give him the punt? Well, I think um, it's if you've brought in Harris... You're going to have to stick uh, with him and see how he goes. Even with a break-even of 70, he, he won't score that. He'll definitely lose value. But it's like any of the major guns that we spoke about earlier in the video. I think you've got to stick through those guys. One guy I'm kind of keeping a keen eye on is, of course, Mattering. I'm looking at bringing in Mattering because he's now starting. And the other thing is, he's down at a low value of, of about 695k. The only thing is, I'm pretty sure he's going to have a ridiculous break-even of 63 so I think he's going to he's gonna lose points. And I think I want to bring in Mattering, possibly for someone like Havili or even uh, Liggy South. I could do that trade next week. So I can, you know, bring in another second row who's going to be scoring very well for me because you know how much of a fantasy gun that Mattering is, boys. Is it worth trading out for a max player, e.g. Damian Cook, and taking a hit with a 212k player? No way, man. Damian Cook, dude... At the end of the day, you're playing for points. Um, at the end of the day, you're playing for points. Damian Cook, you want... At the end of the day, what you'd want to see in your 17 players is the 17 highest scoring players. So if you already have one of the top 17 scoring players in your team, trading him out is a backward step for your team. You want to be able... It's like a game of chess. You've got all these starting pieces and you want to be able to develop your pieces and get in a position that you want to see yourself at the end game in an attacking kind of onslaught of your enemy. So it's like that. You want to be able to build your team. You want to be able to make money. But trading out someone like Damian Cook, even if he's maxed out at price, silly because he's going to be top scoring. You want to look at your, those, those cash cows that have peaked and are no longer going to make money. Like your Mark Nichols, for example, who still has a little bit of cash to go. Liggy Sow, who's not playing. Scott Sorensen is not playing. You want to be able to trade out those guys for guys that are going to make you money while, you, while your highest scoring players are like your set pieces. It's like your Bishop, your Rook, while everyone else is a pawn in the whole thing. All right, boys, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming into the stream. I really, really appreciate it, guys. If you enjoyed this stream, be sure to hit the like button down below. It's been an absolute privilege to have a couple of you guys come in and ask all your questions. And hopefully I've been able to answer quite a few that have come through on my way. And uh, we may be back next week, depending upon the popularity of this series yet again. And I've enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you all score well in the in the following week and in this week as well. Remember guys, we are coming up to buy rounds round 13 and you want to make sure you're able to score the maximum amount of points that you possibly can with the team that you have and the trades that you are enabling. So I will talk to you guys later. As Lazy Gamer has pointed out, there is a Discord in the chat. There's also my Twitter. So be sure to hit that as well. Hit the subscribe button down below. And uh, boys, I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. And remember, if you have any further questions, be sure to hit us up in Discord and the NRL Fantasy channel. I'll talk to you guys later. And another thing I'm discovering lately I'm a bit crazy for my rugby league team the best season yet you'll see and you will hear